So um, I'm very excited and cannot wait to get into that action. Um, but first, we do have a couple things that we want to plug. We have some wonderful merchandise available for a limited time offer, just about a week, and we will be selling it. All the proceeds from that will be donated from GSA the, um, and going towards the kind of donation total that has been right. piling up as of now. Uh, we also have some Celeste stuff, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Five cassettes, five vinyls, and five uh, Steam keys. It's given away to subscribers. Now, if you subscribe, $2 is given from GSA into the prize pool. That is right. Plus, you get some awesome emotes, too. You can't go wrong like, with those, right? You, you got the Mario dab. You got, you got quite a few awesome emotes, so check that out. And the merch. Like, this is pretty awesome. I mean... I'm, I am actually in love with this mug, and I might have one myself. I mean, so. I might take this one. I, I, yeah. Nobody's stopping you, I don't think. Right? <laughs> but... You know, getting back into the competitive side uh, of today's events, you know, we have Celeste, Super Mario Odyssey, and Super Mario 64. It, it's been a showing for all three events. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And, you know, uh, really, really close races. Yeah. I think that everybody's kind of settling into that. You know, we've been talking a lot about how these runners are going to feel in front of a live audience. And I think they're really kind of coming into their own. Agreed. Especially in day two. But today is where the rubber meets the road. This is where Absolutely. we see who's going into the grand finals for all three of these events. Um, a, a huge showing. Um, the standings right now, we're going to be going over those in just a second. Um, I know for us on the SM64 side, it's kind of been a blowout. You know, uh, Cheese reigning supreme at number one. But D-Whatever and, and Punkation are like neck and neck. For that second spot, just going back and forth, it's been crazy. What about Odyssey? How's that been? Odyssey, you know, kind of a similar story going on in Odyssey. We have, of course, at the very top, Chaos Pringle, just like absolutely dominating, really showing that his consistency is not at all affected by the fact that he is here. And then you have Necrovita, who very surprisingly has kind of taken a little bit of a fall and yeah. like really, really does have to pull it together. And like really the only way that he can p have a potential chance at getting that top two is beating Chaos Pringle himself. Right. So very, very tough situation there. Meanwhile, Stravos Little Curbs facing off today. Um, really, the winner of that could decide who ends up facing off in the final two tomorrow. And then with Celeste, we have a little bit of an interesting situation. TGH, the one who is on top there, does have kind of a commanding lead over that right. bracket. And then there are a couple of other people. Flodervi actually having a very unfortunate day yesterday against M. Sushi, taking 3-0 uh, loss in that situation. And for him to come at, out on top and make it to the finals might require the same kind of upset situation. Right. He's facing TGH today. And it's really going to take some major, major victories against him to make that finals happen for Flodervi. But then the toss-up really is between M. Sushi and against Shy Kitty as well. So I mean, and, and it's just been crazy this entire time. There's, there's not been blowouts. It's been really close races. Absolutely. You know, uh, some mistakes here and there, but uh, it's been phenomenal so far. Yep. Like absolutely crazy. Like I, I, I'm almost kind of betting on a sub hour. SMO, any percent run at any point. That would be pretty phenomenal stuff. You just never know what is coming, and it could very well happen at pace. I mean, Little Curbs already has a sub-hour race time, which you right. just would not even expect. You right. Know? You know, who does that in a race? That, that's phenomenal. Yeah, like, Little uh, Curbs could pop off at just about any moment. So uh, that is that is kind of just um, the nature of it, you know? You just never know what to expect. Yeah, no worries. You know... We're going to go to a recap from yesterday. A lot of highlights that happened, a lot of stuff to go over, stuff that, you know, we've been up for, you know, six days in a row, it feels like, so we may have missed. But uh, we're going to go ahead and cut to this video, and then right after that, sitting in these chairs, FC Racers, Electric, commentating this next Celeste match. It's going to be hot. Bringing you the results of day three live here at Pace, and check out this video. And that's, that's just such a like neat and neatly <gasps> expressed message. Vlad narrowly... This save though, oh my gosh, wow. let's go. The feather skip. <laughs> this is, okay, this is crazy because he's on a completely different cycle. This, oh my gosh, yo. Me time Vlad. Yeah. Ooh, Vlad just a little bit. I'm not sure what happened there. You, what you, was that? What? What was that? Yo. <laughs> what kind of improv move? What? I approve of all of that, yo. Causing a lot of problems from 23 to 22. 
He's just not getting enough height and was just falling to his death from there. Nice recovery, too. Oh, my gosh. Let's wow. Go. Just keeping him, keeping himself alive there through this downdraft portion. That effectively looked intentional, but it was not. You do not want to get that close to the spikes in this section. M. Sushi, meanwhile, a little bit relaxed, showing off that photogenic side. He's getting ready for more clips and more highlights for, for the day two recap. Already close tell. dive. I think that might have happened to him again uh, yesterday <gasps> already. Oh, that is really unfortunate. Falling down there is one of the mistakes I actually haven't seen. This is clutch that he actually didn't bonk um, and was able to gain back control because the D-puts loading zone is lurking below. A lot of our NPC interactions, and that's basically because the camera will do this slow pan towards a, a particular spot <laughs> before Stravos. proceeding. Oh, God, oh my dude. goodness, Stravos. Very, very close to death there, but a very good save. And in, in the Lake Kingdom is because we're taking away from the time that we can't change and we can't avoid, and we're turning it into oh, time Strauss that we can. <laughs> Strauss got the frame perfect, uh, the frame perfect uh, first camera, <laughs> first person camera. He, he was happy about that. I saw that in his yeah. player cam. Up there, oh. super. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to unfold. Oh, the ground pound, the technical Very knowledge nice. from Ouija not going to allow a death. Oh, but there. a burned bottom. Wow. Um, oh, 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 wow. <laughs> that was, uh, that was see, pretty pog champ. Yeah, you could see it in D whatever his face. Very relieved <laughs> that he did not die there. It, it's so easy to fall into that quicksand. There's it is. a lot of silly things that can happen in shifting sand land. And what welcome up? back, everyone. It's Electric with FC Racers. Yep. About to get into some awesome Celeste action with M. Sushi and Chai Kitty. And that is going to be an exciting race for oh, reasons man. we'll explain in just a bit. But first, we're going to go ahead and go to some standings for the uh, final part of the recap here. Just so everyone knows the context of these matches. So Tej in a commanding lead with eight points total. Uh, he is pretty well secured in that grand final spot because of that. Now, M. Sushi with... Four points in second place. If he wins out against Chai Kitty, that guarantees his grand final spot too. There just will not be enough points to go around. But if Chai takes a game off of him, then uh, Vlad really has a chance at those grand finals. Now, in Odyssey, we've got Chaos Pringle with a commanding 141 point lead. The only person who has not lost yet. Uh, Stravos and Little Curbs both splitting one win, one loss. 92 points on Stravos' side due to his really, really great clean wins. Uh, little Curbs a little bit shaky on a couple of runs. And then Nicro, unfortunately, just not able to get off to a great, great start at 54 points. And then finally, in the SM64 League, we got Cheese from CounterLogic Gaming with two wins and 127 points. Close races, and so Punke is going to be in a very nice close second with 111 points, splitting a win and a loss. D whatever in third, uh, losing to Cheese yesterday. Uh, pretty commandingly, though, he was able to get pretty close and uh, score those 89 points. And Ouija, unfortunately, with those two losses and just 23 points, especially after that pretty rough uh, time loss in that last run yesterday. So overall, the standings uh, can still be shaken up a decent amount, and especially in Celeste, as we see these guys are going to be doing it for the best reason. Doing it for Archie. Yep. <laughs> The hype already getting up in the crowd, too. We're going to get underway here very soon. Just waiting on that countdown. And again, it's pretty much anybody's game right now between these three runners to get in. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Sushi just needs to win. If he wins this set, he's guaranteed. That's going to give him seven points. Well, it, it, if he wins out this set, he yeah. is completely guaranteed. Yeah, if he wins out, he's completely guaranteed. Four, three, two, four, four. All right, here we go. So ultimately, the onus is on Sushi right now. If he just loses one game to try, then Vlad has a really, really interesting opportunity if he wins out against Tej, which you know we've seen in his races against Tej, some pretty amazing stuff happen. Yeah, so definitely. not outside the realm of possibility, but if he wins out against Tej, he would actually snipe that spot from Sushi. So that's really what Sushi's going for. Not necessarily the win, but the 3-0 sweep. And Chai really going to give him a run for his money. Yeah, definitely. And then also too, if there is a tie in points, it does come down to the heads up match as well. So that puts a little more pressure on Flitterby to sweep because if Sushi and Flitterby tie, uh, Sushi's gonna win off the tiebreaker in advance of the finals. And Chai's not out of it either. If he actually sweeps here too, um, and Flad doesn't take any games off of Teach, he has a chance of actually making it in as well with five points. So. It's, it's going to be really tight, and it's going to lead to an exciting finale here as we get ready to get into Forsaken City again. Yeah, and oh, try with two deaths so far in City, 
just not getting a, a great start, just having to shake it off. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and similar. Actually, it's very similar to what happened yesterday against his match against TJ. He had a lot of hangups in City. Um, Chai is known to reset his runs based off of City, so he's got to get off of that mental block early. And so far, so good. I mean, we've seen a lot of composure coming back, doing some great movement here. Uh, Sushi about two screens ahead, give or take. But we do have a lot of stuff coming up that could cause some mistakes here. Most notably that last room with the spike jump. And then also that neutral, uh, or that climb up and the very last screen, or second to last screen, excuse me. Uh, so the runners have been having a little bit of hang up there and it can give Chai an opportunity to get right back into this race. Yeah, because because you're having to bounce so high and the, the stamina ends up being so tight that we see Sushi getting it nice and handy, but uh, pretty precise movement in order to get that first try. And then Chai up to bat, he's gonna get that too. Sushi's gonna clock in at a total of 133 and Chai with a 139. So already a six second lead for Sushi. Heading into old site. Yep. And I mean, ultimately, in these first levels, any sort of lead like that is really just, you could consider it like a, a early comfort buffer for later on in the run where you start having a lot of really, really brutal movement and uh, brutal tricks such as Bub's Drop. But we're going now into old site. And if you've seen any of uh, yesterday's or the day before's races, you know, both of us commentators, very, very partial to the soundtrack. And for me in particular, this is a huge track for it. I keep saying it, but like, Really, um, what did you say the composer's name was? I don't know why I can't. Uh, Lena Rain. Yeah, for some reason I was, I was thinking it's Lunar something. I was about to say Lunar Jump, and I was like, wait like, a minute. Wait, nope, nope, nope. That's Mario. <laughs> Hold on. But um, like, they're up there. If if this is the level of all of their music, they're up there with the greats in the ambient electronic producers. It's it's really amazing what they've done with this OST, and this progressive soundtrack really showcases it. Which, if you'd like a copy of that soundtrack, we do have uh, vinyls and cassettes we are giving away to subscribers. Ooh, Chai with that unfortunate uh, boost through the dream block right into the spikes. Anytime you make contact with a solid wall right after a dream block, that is an instant death. I know. We got Sushi getting into the second to last screen here of the battle and fight. Getting ready for this descent here. Five battle ends hot on his tail. He's going to dive, threaden the needle through those spikes. Get into this little gauntlet with these coin switches is not a problem. Chai now getting into that room himself. And te or teach, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sushi <laughs> out first as he's getting ready to get into awake. Chai not far behind, getting that last coin. And making his way through here. Keeping it close, keeping it honest. Sushi with the corner boost there. Very important. You want to do those corner boosts so you can keep that momentum and keep that speed up. And that's what Celeste is all about, is just maintaining as much momentum and speed as you can as you're running through each of these levels. So now Sushi in awake, just gliding through. Chai hot on his tail, getting ready for his awake as well. Yeah, and Sushi is not messing around today. Oh, he's just a little bonked there, but that's all right. We'll see. He's going to be at 325. Chai not far behind. He's going to get the boost here. Nice, nice boost. He's going to save a little bit of time here. And it's about a seven-second difference between the runners here as we head into Celestial Resort. And Celestial Resort, where things really, really start heating up. You know, in Forsaken City, you have those uh, kind of boosting blocks that are your your little gimmick there, uh, and also just kind of introducing you to the game's movement. And then, of course, in Old Sight, those dream blocks. Now you've got the dust money mechanic, and to optimize these rooms and their cycles, it takes some really, really tight movement around some of these bunnies. Sometimes you, you can swear that Madeline's making contact, but the hitbox just not quite congruous with uh, where the Dust Bunny's visual is, but Chai, unfortunately, Ooh. proving that they do have a hitbox with that early death. Yeah, on that death cycle, too, so he had to do a completely different route there, but was able to barely get by. It's going to extend Sushi's lead just a little bit here. Yeah, so if you haven't seen uh, when we were talking about in this game, um, the cycles are kind of interesting after a death. Madeline takes about a second and a half for you to regain control of her, and so the cycle is actually going to be different because you can't move right away. Uh, whereas all of the stuff in the room does start moving. So there's some, especially towards the end of Resort, where you start getting into the Oshiro fight, there's some really rough screens to take deaths on because Oshiro's positions just become way harder to manage. All right, Sushi's going to grab that key. China in that coin room as well, but Sushi is about to get started on his huge mess portion here. So similar to Awake, this very first room, very cluttered with a whole bunch of stuff, and it's like a labyrinth, and the runners are going to try their best to just navigate their way through. we got some very tight areas for Madeline to move around. Sushi doing an excellent job here, getting through it at a very nice time as he gets his cleanup portion going here. Chai just entering that room as well. And so with the cleanup portion here, we have three different sections that we're trying to take care of. 
we have the crates, the books, and the towels. Uh, in a casual playthrough, you get to choose whichever way you want to go. But for the speedrun purposes, we have a specific route, which, as I mentioned, off crates, books, and towels. And the reason that we do that is as soon as you get out of each section, as you'll see here on Sushi's screen, uh, Mr. Oshiro is very close by. Oh, a little hang up there from Sushi and a death from Chai. But we do this route because as soon as you get out, it's as close to Oshiro as possible, saving as much time as we can. Now, uh, Sushi running into that wall, uh, some people might be like, you know, why didn't he just dash totally over it? Do you want to talk a bit about corner boosting and why it's so important in this run? Yeah, so like with the, with the boosting, uh, it keeps your momentum as you move forward. And in a lot, if, especially if you have a, high, uh, a dash on deck, you can further enhance that speed. There is no speed cap in Madeline's movement whatsoever, and you will see that later in the run. But ideally, we're going to use these corner boosts and then chaining uh, hyper dashes off of them to just get as much speed as we can out of this mountain climber. Yep. So but the unfortunate consequence oh, is you're yeah. trying to cut those corners so close that sometimes you just end up uh, just colliding with the wall and getting stuck there. Yeah, they actually have the opposite, which is called a corner bop, where if you uh, hyper dash into a corner and try to jump off of it, sometimes, depending on your position, you can actually have all of your momentum taken away from you. So it's something to be mindful of as you're playing through the game. It's happened to every runner. So we got Chai getting to the last section of the house, going for that quick cycle, and he's going to nail it, while MCG, on the nice. other hand, getting into elevator shaft here. And this is actually going to come up to the first big trick of the game, uh, Demo Dash. Yeah, so we'll try to elaborate a bit on it beforehand. Basically, uh, Sushi first, then Chai is going to attempt to do a pixel-perfect crouched dash through what looks like a solid wall of dust bunnies, but internally that's not what it is at all. So uh, all of these groupings of dust bunnies are just clumps attached to a wall. And this little ridge right here that you see on Sushi's screen is no exception. And so there just actually happens to be a gap between the two blobs' hitboxes that's four pixels in height. And when Madeline is crouched, that's her exact height as well. So uh, when they grab onto that wall just before trying that jump, they're trying to align Madeline with a particular pixel in the background so that when they jump, when Madeline's, the top of her head, hits a um, particular pixel in the background, it's the perfect position to execute that dash. And Sushi opting for the checkpoint setup to make sure that uh, if he missed it, he wouldn't be uh, wasting too, too much time having to go all the way back to the pre uh, beginning of the previous room. Yeah, if you opt to not choose the checkpoint, it does save two seconds, but if you fail, it is about an eight second loss as it puts you all the way back at the beginning. Um, Chai having a little difficulty in that task cycle room. It's been the bane of a lot of the runners just at this live event. Um, you get a nice corner boost, you have a little time to react to it, and just a lot of things can go wrong. But now we've got Chai starting off on the Yoshiro chase. Sushi at the final screen here, about to do some more corner boosts. Oh, opting to play it safe. I respect the move. He's going to clock in at a 421, and Chai uh, just a few screens behind here. All right, so we got Chai getting through this dash crystal section, and in the final screen here. Now, this screen, if you get on Death Cycle, you really have to just play a, an improvising game. So far, so good on Chai's screen. He's going to get through here. He's going to go for the safe route as well, and he's going to come in at 439 altogether. But Sushi already knee deep in Golden Ridge. Like, do you want to talk about Golden Ridge a little bit? Yeah, so Golden Ridge's mechanic is that it adds a bunch of wind. And the wind is an interesting thing because when Madeline is dashing, she's unaffected by it. But there are a couple of points where we are going to want to use the way the wind moves Madeline to our advantage. And. Uh, in addition to that, you are going to be seeing a couple of uh, little optimizations here and there. For example, Archie, and then uh, some other uh, very nice shoutouts from the crowd for the most important trick in the whole run. Doesn't save that much time, but it is the entire reason running this game is worth it. Oh, definitely. It has taken uh, the throne of Door Skip as the king of tricks. And so we just saw from Sushi's screen another interesting tech called spike jumping. So uh, this game has what I, I call accurate spikes in that the double Archie, nice, nice. So uh, if you don't have movement into spikes, then you won't actually be hurt by them. So for instance, if you climb on top of a platform that is topped with spikes, as long as you climb on top of it in such a way that Madeline doesn't move actually physically downward, you can get your dash back from that little piece of ground. It's a really interesting mechanic, and you also see it a lot uh, with vertically oriented spikes and uh, grabbing onto the wall and doing neutral wall jumps. And so uh, that's actually what forms the foundation of Lake Skip, which you'll see at the beginning of Reflection uh, in a few minutes here. Oh, Sushi and I get in the coyote frames there. He's going to take a backup strat. Also, Sushi's going for that reverse hyper strat and just barely missed that green bubble. We're going to see if Chai's going to go for that. He is on the screen to get that set up here. 
is opting not to, going for the other strat that we have with the reverse hyper there. Making it look very clean here. So and uh, we haven't today, I don't think, discussed hyper dashing. Um, we have discussed it over the past couple of days, but it's an interesting mechanic because the game doesn't tell you about it until, I believe, 8C or something like that. Yeah, that's correct. And so you, you play through the whole game, and then the game is like, have you ever tried crouching while dashing? And you think, wait, what? So for whatever reason, I, I think it's that, like, the game kind of feels like Madeline is being pinched and wants to, like, force her out of that pinch situation. The, whatever the case, whenever you're crouching while dashing, you get a lot more momentum. And that's referred to as a hyper dash. And um, whenever you chain hyper dashes together, uh, you get extended hypers or even ultra dashes. And it, again, just allows you to zoom through these levels as long as you're able to execute the movement precisely. Yeah, so we got Sushi on the final screen of Cliff Face here. Chai barreling through the snowball section. Oh, getting a little caught up there, but was able to adjust. Yeah, you can see how, you know, even though when Madeline's dashing, the wind doesn't affect her at all, you can barely move in these screens when you're trying to walk normally. All right, Sushi leaving Ridge at 1036. Chai just a few screens behind, maybe a little over 11 minutes in total here, but... I mean, so far, Sushi has a very nice sleep, but we are heading into the Equalizer, also known as Mirror Temple, and most importantly, 5B. Yep. So um, in case you uh, haven't followed speedruns super well of this game, you're actually about to see them, instead of just completing 5A, they're going to be uh, getting the tape that unlocks the B side. So every level, if you've never played this game casually, there's a hidden little secret area that has a little cassette tape in it. Sushi taking an unfortunate death twice at those spikes, Let's see if third time is the charm here. And it is very nice. Um, so the B side of each level is just a much harder version of the level with just the same aesthetic, a remix track, and just insane platforming. And um, it just so happens we figured out that uh, when you complete the B side of a chapter, it unlocks the next chapter, even if you've never completed the A side of the previous chapter. And it happens to be faster to go grab the tape here. So she's going for yeet and... It's clean, it's nice, clean. very nice. Coming through with that yeet, let's go. Let's see if Chai Kitty can match it. But um, I, I believe it's like the the A time, uh, a good time is somewhere around one twelve or less. Uh, really yeah. good is one ten, and then uh, in the B side it's like two thirty, forty, and just completing A side takes I believe four minutes. Right now, Sushi getting set up here, getting that tape grab, looking to be about a one seventeen. So very good time. Oh yeah, just those unfortunate spike deaths. 118 on the clock. Uh, the timer does reset when you go into the B side, so it's important to make note of that while we're watching right there. And what's Ten. interesting is oh, when... Didn't get the hyper there and had to be quick on his feet there on the screen. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, like, you're fine. That, that, was, that one caught me off guard. That was, was a like, wild a save. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good save because uh, one of the things about those tape rooms in particular is that uh, those blocks are on cycle with the music. So. It's different from everywhere else. It's like that cycle constantly keeps going. And if you do take a death there, you might have to wait a little longer to get the, the route that you want. Yep. Right, so Sushi going for Bub's Drop, and he is going to get that. Nice. First try Bub's Drop. So uh, that trick, if you fail, it say, or loses 10 seconds per fail. And that trick is a huge reason why the B-side is part of this route. Whenever we first realized that the B-side completion would unlock Chapter 6, it was only like two, three seconds faster. And people were like, that, that's not really worth it, especially since it's so hard. And there was also, uh, like you were saying yesterday, a really precise uh, jump at the end of the level that used to yeah. save some time. Nice double first tries. Okay. It's really, really great to see people not have to uh, take those menu losses. And two, it ends up resulting in a pretty significant desync when someone has to go back to the menu after a bump drop fail. So, yeah. And while it is a desync, again, we are going off of IGT here, so those that time is not accounted for in the run itself. Yeah, bump drop fails would you, would be just brutal if we were doing real time. It'd probably be like upwards of twenty seconds. You know who didn't have to deal with a bump drop fail today? <laughs> and who was that? Why, well, that would be me, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for those that don't know, FC Racers here actually did an invisible percent run where when Madeline is in motion, she is invisible, and somehow he managed to get Bub's drop first try while being unable to see Madeline. So hype in the chat for that. Um, but the way Bub's drop works is a, it's an exploit of the uh, checkpoint mechanic, so by doing that precise wall balance and holding down, you're able to kill Madeline's upward momentum to prevent her from going over that one-way platform. And the game never expects you to go back down into that room from that entrance. 
And so when you take a death there, the checkpoint system just assumes that you came from the right side of the room. And so that skips having to go get a second key and go get a red bubble from the left side. And it ends up saving, like, I think 20, 30 seconds over the original 5B route, which makes the time save just super worth it for doing 5B over just 5A. So I just want to take a moment to, oh, hold on. We got some drama going on in the secret gauntlet room here with Chai. But I wanted to talk about in the uh, third room from In the Mirror, I noticed Chai doing a completely different route than what he's been doing earlier. So I wonder if he found a way to save a little bit of time there by going for a different approach. Like in that room, you're supposed to go off the seeker and then go about your business, but he went top route there. So, and these runners have been practicing. Oh, nice save, let's wow. go. Wow, yeah. Nice read. And just going to wow. go ahead and leave Theo behind. He's like, no, I deserve this crystal heartbreak now. Oh man. I am curious if he is going to do the leave Theo behind trick. That's something that Chai is infamously known for. Uh, I won't spoil it, but we'll see if we can see it in one of the future races here. But in the meantime, we've got both runners now in reflection, taking care of these golden feathers here. I should note, both of them are on keyboard, and with that, um, the feathers are omnidirectional. So if you're playing on a controller, use left analog stick, you get full free range motion on these, and it's um, very nice, if I say so myself, because if, as long as you don't move more than 13 degrees, you maintain that speed and that momentum. On keyboard, it's a little harder. You're gonna have to do a little bit of a button pressing between up and right or holding one and just kind of tapping and getting your way going. Yeah, so you're, you're gonna see the, uh, uh, a lot of like wiggling in the golden feather movement because of that, because they're just rapidly shifting between two keys to get a better diagonal. Yeah, and especially trying to get to these like U-turn sections here. I have tried keyboard and I will tell you that I, I just can't do it. So uh, it mad props to them for running on, on their preferred choice. I remember playing casually, even D-pad was, was pretty difficult to actually, like I, I kept switching back between the two just because I, I had a lot of trouble actually. And it, it's very hard to actually control them. Like these guys obviously very, very well practiced, but the feathers uh, do not turn really on a dime and can just be really, really awkward to control at times. All right, so now both runners are in hollows. Now this section in particular, you have the option of either going top route or bottom. I believe, except for one room now, we go completely top route. Um, and that's a room that is going to be coming up here on Sushi side after this screen where we have these breakable sections. This is the only time that you want to go to the bottom route. This is way faster than that top route room. Uh, I highly recommend not checking it out because it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I went in there, I was like, oh, what's this? And I'm like, oh, this is why we don't do this. Okay. And I was getting those breaks on those uh, blocks too. If you're at the right distance away from those blocks and you finish your dash, you'll get your dash back and it allows you just quickly go through those, those uh, brick walls. Because usually what you have to do is like mat, uh, mat a little bounce off of them and have to wait for her to land to get her dash back. But if you're in the right position, you're able to get it back and actually b continue moving. And that also happens in old site as well. Yep. Now, real quick, uh, Belgian in chat asking, is this a rerun? I don't know. You tell me. What if he said that before? In a previous, like in yesterday's run? <laughs> What is happening here? All right, so now both runners getting into Ravine here. So Ravine's got three developer intended uh, shortcuts here. Sushi's so on the first one and the second one. The third one, he got a little bit of wiggle. He's got it there. It's a very nice. high risk reward situation because if you take a death, you are forced all the way back to the beginning as there are no checkpoints that you uh, get doing this route. And Chai mm -hmm. gonna nail through that too. Getting a little close to those spikes though, just a little too close to comfort. But he's going to get through this underwater portion here as Sushi is setting up for battle and boost. You're going to see this momentum that we're talking about here. Off the Kevin block. So a, a big thing in this game is when you jump off of a moving block, you retain the momentum from that moving block. It's a mechanic that uh, gets explained to you in Chapter 1, but situations like this are where we really get a lot of use out of it. You just, as you can see, just go flying right into battle and the first boost is free. As we go into the hey section. I, I would try to do the impersonation, but my voice is a tad hoarse, and I feel like it would just come out as squeaks or something. Yeah. I mean, it's just, pace has been too hype. It's my, been my too voice hype. There's been a lot it. of hooping and hollering going on, and um, just kind of getting there. I may have to go invest in some tea later on this evening and just kind of just chill, you know? And certainly same. Because we definitely same. got our grand finals coming up tomorrow, and I am thrilled for that but we have a lot of games to go prior to that. Most likely this battling fight here. 
Both runners doing very well. Oh, Chai having a little bit of, got a little too much uh, Air Jordan there. A little too high and bonking that ceiling. But still, Sushi actually having a very nice lead here. This is getting closer to the second round here. We'll try to get a good timestamp here so you guys can see. Now, during the online lead, it was very easy for us to perform a sync by pausing one of the streams. But since this oh, is a live event, Chai yeah. just with that. Awkward that golden right feather momentum, and I honestly thought he just ran into the spikes with it again right there. Really, really close. But yeah, unfortunately, can't really resync at the live venue. I uh, wish we, we had, and it, it, it's kind of funny that the TVs in the venue, uh, except for the main projector, have motion smoothing, and so for the first day, I actually thought that we were doing like a little bit of speed up slowdown for resync, but nope, uh, just having the gameplay as it goes. But, I mean, these guys actually maintaining a decent synchronization on their own, about 10 seconds apart. Yeah, we're actually getting here. It's looking to be actually about uh, Sushi having a 22-second lead here as we go into the second round of the battle and fight. Yeah, and this is where the deaths get really, really brutal. So, obviously, you have to respawn at the start of the room for every death. And with these very vertically oriented rooms, like you can easily lose 10 plus seconds just to having to redo all of this movement. I'm talking about transitioning in the room here. Nice, just skipping that platform altogether and diving straight into that feather. Save it ever just the smallest amount of time. Sushi getting ready for this final bout here, that last bonk, and he is gonna be out and leveling up here very shortly and getting ready for Summit. Chai not too far behind, he's got this last screen here. Battling has been known to pick people off here. Most notably, at this feather right here, we're going to see how he handles it. Not getting that animation. Yeah, so, just doing that quick edge grab. Yeah. Like, real quick about the feathers. If you get to a feather fast enough before, like, while still in the, you know, before while Madeline is in it, you skip that whole animation sequence of her transforming. Um, and it's very helpful. It definitely keeps your speed. But in that last screen, the way that the route is set up, if you are in that change or that transformation while Madeline has lined up, it's a guaranteed shot. It's like you're just, well, I might as well start over. <laughs> yep. Here we go. So she's taking a quick stretch, looking at that mountain there. We've got 3,000 meters to go, folks, before we get to the end of this first race here. You know, Chai Kitty with the matching T-pose. T-pose for power. Oh, so she's with a little hang up there, but as we're looking at IGT, it's about, it looks to be about around 20 seconds. So, again, with Summit and the way that it goes, anything can happen. I mean, I'm... I'm under the impression that Chai is going to be pulling out all the stops. We're going to be seeing auto scroller skip. We're going to be seeing that corner boost in the first screen of 2500. Like these super risky strats that he's going to have to go for just to try to take time. And I'm curious to see if Sushi is going to actually play it a little safe because he does have that lead. I mean, like, yes, if Sushi just goes for the normal auto scroller skip, he's going to lose a little time to Chai if he gets it. But at the same time, if he goes for the auto scroller skip and misses it, he's actually going to lose a lot more time. Oh, yeah. And that, so that, that could be certainly be the uh, difference here with try trying to come in for a yeah uh, and like and to put, win. To, sorry to put that into perspective from yesterday uh teach versus chai in that last race like chai was forcing teach to go for those more risky strats because it was that close yeah they, they were really just playing off of each other in the most ridiculous ways and actually seeing it here sushi not going for the reverse oh he's going for it here though nicely nice done. yeah is a really really precise hyper and uh in case you've never played casually and you haven't snapped to it, Madeline can only dash in the cardinal or ordinal directions. Chai with a rough death there, trying to go for that faster strat. And so Sushi hitting the orb about mid-51. Let's see. Uh, Chai's probably going to be about 30 or so seconds behind, unfortunately. Exactly 30, actually, with a 22-21 grab there. I know Sushi getting through to the 1000 section. Dream blocks have come back into play. And now that we have the second dash, you can actually hyper out of these blocks. And with that extra dash, you can squeak in a few ultras here and there. Arguably, this, or not arguably, I think that this is the most funnest section in Summit, if you want my honest opinion. Oh, yeah, the movement is just so fluid, just hopping between these dream blocks. And yeah, just look at that. And Chai also getting set up there. Nice corner boost coming into that room. Oh, but then Chai not able over. to actually get into that uh, dream block to get even more height. And also uh, worth mentioning here are the dream hypers. So because you have the double <gasps> dash from having Badlin, oh, just way just too low barely. on the exit. But, that, uh, is, that is one of the risks of hypering out. If you do not jump at the right time, you will just basically do a dash downboard forward. And um, as we see, it can result in a death and starting over. 
Yeah, when you uh, do a hyper dash out of a dream block, you maintain absurd amounts of speed. And because you have the double dash here, you can do those, uh, we call them galaxy hypers, and still retain a dash in the air, which is very, very useful. Now, these guys in 1500, the dust bunny section. Ooh, that nice, what was it, quadru septuple? I don't even know the number, I don't even know the word, but just uh, oodles and oodles of ultras from sushi there. Yeah, it used to be the triple ultra room, and now we're having to figure out uh, how exactly those extended words work. So it would be triple, then quadruple, then pentuple, then sextuple, then centuple, then octuple, then I'm nonuple. Just, I don't even know what to call it. I'm just going to be like, just loads and loads of ultras, or just the ultra room. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really the way to call because I'm sure that we'll still find ways to add at least more boosts, if not even more ultras to that room over time. All right, now Sushi in 2000 now. He's going to be heading to the final snowball room. Uh, this room actually had his card in the first race against TGH at day one. Not a factor today, and he's getting in this room. What is he going to go for? It looks like he's playing it safe, going for the traditional auto scroller skip. I respect this move. Yeah, so the auto scroller skip just skips the second half of this room, as you can see there. Just riding the motion block for a little bit. Could be seeing the opposite side of that, the uh, bounding under the terrain Ooh, from oh. Shy Kitty. Stamina's still there? Okay. Oh, man, wow. Okay, and Shy Kitty just opting for the standard auto scroller skip as well. Doesn't want to deal with the potential time loss. But he fell short! Oh, oh my gosh! He's going to have to do this one all over again. Yeah, and just going for the standard stride again. I, I can respect that. Cutting your losses is a very, very respectable choice there. And with the auto scrolls being one of the most uh, devastating rooms to take a death in because you do have to use the block again and try to get everything set up here. And so far, Sushi now going through the battle and alley-oop section of 2000, doing a nice demo underneath that auto scroller block. While Chai, just a few screens behind as Sushi enters 2500. Is really this this could come down to 3,000 now I know Sushi has had some hang-ups in a few of those flags um, prior to coming to pace I mean like at pace season so far that has been non a non-issue oh no Chai messing up the hyper there and dashing into the set of spikes he's got to do this room all over again yeah and these these battling rooms at the end of each th uh, 500 meter section can be especially brutal for that reason because it's it's so much both like waiting for the animation and like in this case it's just such a long room Right now, Chai in 2500, Sushi about halfway through, just a few screens left, and you know, we've got the good old Thread the Needle and Door Skip coming up. There's a nice Thread the Needle from Sushi getting in here for Door Skip. We got one and a two. It's gonna make it out. One skip, two skip, a red skip, lots of Key blue skip. skip. <laughs> <laughs> All right now, Chai also getting set up here, but Sushi, just not far behind. Now, this room, though, has been causing a little problems here, and a death would change things up, but he is out and getting ready into to get into 3,000. He is going to clock in at 3,000 at 2617. Yeah, so now for these flag sections. Now, he's said before numerous times that uh, 24 to 22 is a particularly rough section for him, but, like, in those races yesterday, it pulled off flawlessly every time. So we'll see if we can do the same here. Making his way on upward through these dashes. Now, in the downdraft portion, it's just pushing so hard that Madeline just has very little vertical height when she's jumping. But again, dashes negate any wind effects, so we are relying on that mechanic. And here's that part. He's going to nail it there. Not a factor this time again. And Chai now just getting into flag number 29. It's still pretty close. Anything can happen. We have a couple long flags coming up, like flag 14 and 13. And then also, the runners tend to opt to skip a few like most notably flag number 10 and number nine, but a death any time from there is gonna send them all the way back to the last checkpoint that they had activated. So it could be a huge time loss depending on what happens. And flag nine is no joke. It's a very tight movement that needs to be done to get that done perfectly. Chai gonna have to come back. He didn't get his dash back there for some reason, but he's able to recover and keep moving here. Sushi getting into 13. Looking good. No, All right, now Chai, Chai getting into the updraft portion as well. And his coins movement is very, very clean. And a nice wall bounce there too. 
All right, he's got flag 11. Let's see what he's going to do. He's going to get 10, or is he going to let it be? Playing it safe, getting the flag. Nice move. Respect the play. As he moves into flag 9, getting that one as well. Just not giving Chai a chance to get back into this race here. Yeah, Sushi really, really wanting to go ahead and seal the deal. If Sushi takes this race, I believe mathematically, Chai can't get enough points for Grand Finals, but he can still throw a huge wrench into Sushi's remaining plans. That is true. All right, Chai, skipping flag 10 and moving forward, while M. Sushi now getting into flag number three, and he's got it there. This is another section where uh, flags three and two can be skipped. Oh, he actually, okay, going back and getting it, playing it super safe. And again, taking a death there would have actually put him back at flag number three if he was to get one, but it's not a factor here. Making that final ascent on flag number one while Chai in the home stretch as well on flag number four. And right. finally closing out Summit, 28.56. Beautiful time from Sushi. Oh, Chai taking a death there on that dash. It looks so like finishing Chai. strong. Yeah, it looks like Chai, unfortunately, will be looking at a 30 for this first race, but um, certainly going into this next race is going to feel very different dynamically for him. Yeah, because unfortunately this victory from Sushi is going to knock Chai out of the running for Grand Finals. But Chai, again, as you said, has the opportunity to just keep the pressure on Yep. by doing that. So now it's going to be down to Flo Derby and M. Sushi. So it's up to Chai to determine exactly how this next uh, set of playoffs is going to go. And so... Yeah, uh, you've seen the frustration on Chai again, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, the city... Just wasn't able to, Sushi wasn't letting him get back from those little falters that happened in the city. But, you know, let's go ahead and give it up a little bit for Chai because that was still some stellar gameplay. May not absolutely, have been able to pull absolutely. off the win, but not many people can pull off a 30. Let's go. Let's go. And again, it's not, it's not out. He can still, he can still throw, some, throw some drama in the mix. Yeah, so, so let's go over what the basic possibilities are. So right. Sushi right now has a secured five points. If Chai wins these next two races, then Flad just has to get a win over Tej. He doesn't have to win out, he just has to get two wins. No, he to get, yeah, he has to win the set. Yeah. So he'll have six points, right? I, I believe, yeah, no. six pin. He has three yeah. going into that set. Okay. And so... I'm bad at math, folks, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, if Chai just wins one of these next two races, that still gives Flad his opening, but he does have to win completely out against Tej. Not impossible, but against a guy as consistent as Tej, it's going to be a huge mountain to climb. No pun intended, of course. Oh, no, let's intend it. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's intend it, yeah, intended. totally. But also, again, you know, with, with, with Derby and Tej, these guys go back and forth all the time. And like I said, track record-wise, Derby has clipped Tej's wings in many different occasions. We had the Speed Gaming Tournament, knocking him into losers. And then we had the Grand Finals, where he also beat them in a best-of-five set. Um, and then the races recently, they went split two and two. So, but at the same time, I mean, I feel like Tej is playing at the absolute best of his ability this weekend. He has been very consistent hitting every trick. He's super focused on this, so it's going to be a daunting task, to say the least. Yeah, but he's, he's especially comfortable with this setting. It's yeah, really that, wild. That is, yeah, that's another thing, too. I feel that he is he's arguably probably the most comfortable runner out of maybe everybody that's up on stage for pace. Like, he just seems very relaxed, just no kind of, like, hiccups or any signs of nervousness or anything I know and like I mean like I was up there too and I definitely was feeling it as well it's definitely a whole new experience but again that mental fortitude just getting all of that out and just focusing in on the task at hand is what really is paying off for some of these runners oh no doubt yeah it's people I think until you start getting heavily into a specific speed game you it's really easy to underestimate how much of a mental thing there is with mm -hmm. speed running so much of it is just about how much focus you have at any given point in time and being unable to like uh, leave behind mistakes or even just go into a run with a good mentality can drastically reduce your performance ultimately. Absolutely. And then again, you know, the runners have been used to doing the online format where, you know, the comfort of their home and just being put in this spot where we have them head to head and being able to see their runner just right there you know, on the big screen as well. And then we have the crowd reactions as well. And then also us because they can hear this over the speakers. 
just every little thing. It's just, it's like, it's easy to focus in on your own game when you're at home, but then like you just have so many other factors where like, okay, well, you know, like for example, hearing about someone taking a death or hearing that Sushi's like playing a safe strat or being aggressive or like getting bub strat first try, like all these little nuances just kind of add into the, the pressure that a runner can encounter. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Now I, I wonder how exactly that pressure will change for Chai in these next two races, knowing that he's not really fighting for himself so much as just to determine how the bracket outcome is going to look. I will say that he's definitely not going to, it's not going to be a slouch. He's not going to call it quits. He's definitely going oh, to still no, push forward to do that. All. But at the same time, I'm, I, I feel like we might see Theo maybe get tossed off stage in 5B. I'm not 100% sure. You know, I, I'm wondering I if like... we could maybe even see a 6B somehow. Because Oh, I don't, we, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> well, we think, never talked think... about it, but technically 6B is faster it's, by two seconds. Yeah, I don't it's think just... a 6B is going to happen. 